when I was um, when I was a kid, I I always knew about badgers and I knew what they looked like, but um, I'd never seen one and I never thought I would. I think I thought that they were sort of made up by um, people who wrote books. I never really thought someday I'll see one, not at all. Uh, it only happened when I started making wildlife films and uh, at some point I no doubt said uh, any chance of filming badgers. My first encounter with a badger was actually on the Isle of Wight where I used to live many years ago. There was a hotel there where they had, the badgers were fed by the people who owned the hotel over many years. And I remember sitting one night in the moonlight watching badgers come down to feed with foxes as well. It was a wonderful experience. I hadn't seen a badger many years after that, but I was wandering down a high street once in Surbiton about two years ago in the suburbs of London and I nearly fell into a badger that was walking the other way. And that often can happen because there are sets around many of our towns and cities that we won't see that have existed for many years where badgers go about their lives at night. But in this instance, obviously our paths crossed. I work today as Chief Executive of the Badger Trust really to draw attention to this wonderful animal, a species that's lived in our isles for nearly half a million years, our largest surviving carnivore, an animal that's subject to significant persecution over the years and today that continues, an animal that is a big part of a political debate about the spread of a disease to cattle, but an animal that is most beautiful, that is an animal that we should protect, an animal that we should celebrate. People often ask me, what is my favourite animal? And I genuinely love all animals. And if I was to really think about it, I seem to have a thing about black and white animals. I had black and white dogs, border collies, I had a black and white rescue guinea pig, and I do love badgers, who are called black and white. And I wonder if this came from when I was little and Bill Badger from Rupert Bear, who was always my favourite character, and I love Bill Badger so much. I was really lucky, therefore, when I was filming Pet Rescue back in the old days, to be able to be hands-on with a baby badger. And this little baby badger here, that was his very, very last day with a human contact and he was about to go back into the wild. So I was really, really privileged to be able to have that moment with that badger. Badgers are a classic British mammal unmistakable, those lovely white heads with those black lines down their faces. Sometimes when you're walking along in a forest at dusk, they can be feeding, you don't notice them. Suddenly they look up and you see this wondrous marking on their head. That may be a warning to other predators, keep away from me, I can actually defend myself, just like the black and white colours of a panda but they are truly extraordinary. And they're all around us in the English countryside. They really are a classic. Nobody ever forgets their first meeting with a badger. You may have seen one running across the road or in your garden at night, and you never tire of seeing them time and again. They really are peaceful, attractive, large British mammals, truly wondrous creatures, and if you can, Try to get out in the woods, try to do some badger watching. If you can find a set, that's the home of a badger that's being used. If you sit quietly an hour or two before dusk and just watch downwind, you may see a whole family of badgers coming out to play and you will never forget that. Badger cubs playing in the evening sunshine is truly wonderful. I'm here with some amazing little badgers that have been rescued and they're all, I've been told, all little orphans that have been found wandering around. Now this seems to be quite common, that often the mother doesn't come back. Oh, he's having a bit of a bath back there. Often the mother doesn't come back, and if the badgers are at the right stage of development, they might be able to find their way out of the set to go and find some food, and that's what these little badgers are. They're the lucky ones that manage to find their way out of the set, and eventually, they're going to be sent back to the wild to be released. It's absolutely wonderful and I love these guys. And I think it's a great opportunity to actually look at how amazing these animals are. Because all too often we find the poor little things lying in the middle of the road and we don't actually see them in the flesh. And one of the things that I really do like about badgers is that they're family animals. They live in sets, that's what their homes are called, sets. And there's the mother, the father, and they can live in the same set for years and years and years and 
bring up their family there. So sometimes you can have huge sets where families have lived for a very, very long time and they sometimes are visited by other animals. Someone told me not so very long ago that one day a fox crept into the set and had a bit of a sleep before he went off again. So you see, animals, unless they are hunting animals and they're going to kill something to eat, they usually keep to their own way of life. They're not invading other animals' territories. If they are frightened by another, another animal, then they'll probably go off and find a, make a home somewhere else. But animals are much more tolerant than people, I think. They know that other animals don't eat the same food as, as they do, so they're not in competition with that. Each has its own place in the natural world, and that's what's so fascinating about it. I like badgers because they're very skilled animals and great diggers. I've been badger watching and seeing them play and run about. It's an amazing sight to see. A male badger is called a boar and a female badger is called a sow. I just love badgers. So, to tell you a bit about how I feel about badgers, I decided to bring you to my local badger set. My house is a couple of hundred metres away, so the guys that live here feel a bit like neighbours. This is a classic badger set. The hole is much bigger than you'd get from a rabbit, and out the front of it there's going to be a big spoil pile, which is where everything that's been dug up from inside the set has been dumped. Here we've got dried bedding material which has been taken out by the badgers and dumped outside and if you look around carefully you'll see lots of black and white guard hairs which are littered everywhere. The badgers are going behind me into the field which you can just see the light out on the other side of the woodlands and that's where they'll be feeding at night time for things like worms and uh, probably for beetles as well. I saw my first badger when I was eight years old. For me they were almost impossible animals to see at that stage. I'd found their footprints on this badger set that was on a slope outside a council estate. I grew up in urban Southampton and uh, I went over one afternoon and I set up a tent and I covered it with bracken to camouflage it and it was about a metre away from the entrance to the badger set. On that occasion I saw no badgers because they smelled me and heard me and I was not going to score. But then my dad said these animals are quite sensitive so what I did then was I climbed up a tree and I looked down onto the badger set and that's when I saw my first badger. And I can remember the car horns going, I can remember people shouting in the, in the flats, and then I can remember it getting quieter, and it was warm, and it was twilight, and I looked down, and I saw this little nose coming out of the badger set. And it made it up onto the mound of soil which it had excavated, and then I shone my torch on it because I was so impatient, and it ran straight back down again. And that was it, that was my introduction to badgers. And I was gripped. Well, I, well, I used to stand on the sets where all their holes are and I used to think these animals are just below my feet. When I was really little and I first sort of got, a bit, uh, got really interested in wildlife and going outdoors, one of the first one of my first memories and first things I remember doing was going out with my uh, with my dad and maybe my granddad and going down to one of my local patches and one of the local sets and watching the badgers there. We'd, we'd normally sit there for hours in the evening. Some at times we'd see something or if my brother was with us we tended not to because he was too noisy but we had to be really quiet and uh, try and keep our profile low. But when we did see something, after waiting there for hours and hours, it was just always really, really it made it worth more, even even more worthwhile just to see, a, just to watch one like sneak, just sort of snooping around the corner and walking towards us. It was just a real treat to see. It's very sad, isn't it, that the, for a lot of us, for a lot of our lives, maybe the only badger we see or badgers that we see are on the road and they've been hit by a car or a lorry because they're very nocturnal, they don't like being out in the daylight and they're looking around and thinking, okay, make a run for it lads, try and cross the road, wham. And um, there's an awful lot, I can't remember what the figure is, but it's huge, and an awful lot of badgers that are killed on the roads. We can't do much about that, but what we can do something about is making sure that badgers are not being persecuted or involved in cruel sports and so on and so forth, or misguided plans. My best memory of watching badgers is when I was three, I used to go down nearly every night and watch them and watch their behaviour. And I 
feed them peanuts sometime and as soon as they hear the peanuts come onto the floor they all come running out for it. My parents who are animal lovers as well uh, have a lovely badger who comes to visit every night and they feed him and they look out for him and um, he's, a, he's a lovely chap and I got this photo of him which I'm very proud of. They live in complex housing um, accommodation called sets and some of them can be hundreds of years old and they've been known to be passed down from generation to generation and the biggest set ever discovered in England was a colossal 15 metres by 35 really really old set with 12 entrances they like to live on bracken and straw and grass and they've been known to actually carry their bedding to the entrance to aerate it and they won't go to the toilet inside the den. They have their own little toilet area and it's usually set aside, just a little stones throw away from the entrance and that's where they go and they don't bring their food back into, into the den either, which is amazing. Fantastic, charismatic and very clean little creatures. So for me, they're very much a, a charismatic animal. They're an intriguing animal. I've still got lots to learn about badgers. There's, there's no doubt about that. I like that. I like the fact that we don't know everything, that we're still learning. And I think the fact that they're nocturnal and they live underground, a little bit inaccessible, increases their appeal. So amongst all of the British mammals, badgers are very definitely one of my favourites. I saw my first badger when I was a little boy, about seven years old. It was running next to the road when we were driving in our car. It was unforgettable. But nowadays, I try to see badgers whenever I can. You never tire of seeing them. And if you get the chance, if you can find an active set near where you live, go there a couple of hours before dusk, put your back to a tree, get downwind, and if you're lucky, the badgers may come out of their set and begin playing in front of you. They usually spend half an hour or so before they go out looking for food. They love slurping up earthworms, finding fungi, all sorts of food like that. They'll eat virtually anything, but you, if you're lucky, you'll see them playing in front of their set. And if there's a family of cubs, that's the most wonderful thing. Well, here we are at the British Wildlife Centre in Lingfield in Sussex, and we've got a very opportunity here to see beautiful badgers at very close quarters. Most of us never see a badger. They are nocturnal animals, they're very shy, and often we only see them when they're dead by the side of the road. But here we have a male and female that have lived in the centre for many years. You can see them acting naturally in this wonderful environment. They are the most beautiful animals and they are something very special. And I spend my time talking about protecting them and about how important it is that we understand about their ecology and behaviour. And National Badger Day is really an opportunity for us to celebrate the badger as part of our landscape, one of our most important wildlife species. And when you come here and see them for all that they do and see their behaviour and look at their natural beauty, you understand why that's so important and I very rarely see these badgers unless I put my camera trap out because they're mostly active by night but I have seen on my camera trap these badgers coming out of the set running around having a good sniff around playing with each other um, sometimes grooming and I have to say I'm absolutely smitten by them even now at my age having spent my entire life working with wildlife every single time I see a, a badger it is still a treasure it's still a precious moment and I think that's probably because you know we've lost so many of our big carnivores here in this country we've hunted out the wolves and the bear and actually all that really remains is the weasel family the family that the badgers belong to so we've got otters weasels stoats and probably the king of them all certainly the heaviest is the badger they're a fabulous animal and one that I absolutely adore and I think that everyone in the British countryside should learn to love them. This year when the cubs came out for the first time they, they couldn't properly stand up and they were just falling over but sometimes when I've put the peanuts down they can get quite boisterous and they push the adults out of the way to get the peanuts so that's probably one of my favourite things about badgers. Now I'm here with a poor little fella that's being brought into 
Holly Wildlife Rescue, he was found entangled in someone's football net in their back garden, which brings me to a very important topic to talk about, which is hazards that people leave around their garden. Now, kids have got lots of toys that they like to leave out. You have nets from, from tennis and football, and wildlife all too often get tangled up. And it's not just badgers, it can be hedgehogs, it could be other animals. So please, please tidy up behind yourself so these little fellas don't end up in rescues. Badgers have been in the British countryside for tens of thousands of years. Fossils of their ancestors have been found with mammoths. They really are a part of the British countryside. They really need to be loved. Just a couple of times a week, put your iPad away, put it down on the table and say, I'm going for a walk, whether it's the park, the common, neighbouring wood, someone else's ground, someone else's garden, and have a little look around, see what you can find. Might not be a badger, might not be a fox, might be a beetle, might be a butterfly. Everything in nature is special.